Hey guys and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be teaching you how to doodle. Well, <laughs> I'm going to show you how I doodle. Okay, so I have my sketchbook here and this is sketchbook 11 and I've sort of dedicated this book to doodles only so I can practice the style. As you can see from this page, it's a full page doodle and it's sort of like a mashup of lots of different things put together. The first step to doodling is to find some inspiration. So I've got my phone here and I'm just going to go on Instagram. Um, I do like to look at Gork's art as he is super cool at doodling. And there's also Vex. I think it's great to look at other artists for inspiration but obviously don't copy them exactly. Sort of take parts from that and, and use it. In your own style. I also think Pinterest is a great place for inspiration as well. I do like to look at retro outfits. <laughs> I know that's you're probably thinking what's that to do with doodling but um, you could draw like really cool characters. Alright so if you peeps would like to grab your sketchbooks, a piece of paper or, <laughs> or anything like that that you can draw on and get a pencil and an eraser and we'll get started. Okay, so doodles are pretty much formed by shapes, so if we start with a simple circle here, it looks pretty boring and standard, right? Well, you can take that circle as a guide and add a cooler shape around it. Here I use like a cloud shape as an example. The next thing would be to learn different expressions and I'd mainly suggest cartoon expressions so you could research different cartoon styles such as Spongebob, Tom and Jerry, Snoopy and several others, basically just taking their features and mashing them up into your own style. Once you've practiced a few expressions we can then take the cloud shape above and then add the expression to it like so. Now I'm just going to share a few other examples of facial expressions and what they would look like in a cloud shape. I think the cloud shape is one of my favourite shapes so far. Another tip I have, you might think this is strange, <laughs> a strange one, but I look at plants and the shape of their leaves and basically just take that and add it like so. You'll see that a few other doodlers like to use buildings in their art and I'm just going to show you an example of how I added them into a doodle. So you can see I've added it into the owl here that I drew and then you'll also see the cloud shape that I added to the flamingo. You can also take a character, we'll use Spongebob as an example, and you just draw the outline of the character and then fill it with doodles and I'll show an example of how I did that here. Okay, so now we're going to take the tips and put them into a full page doodle. Right, so I always make sure to put a separate piece of paper underneath the page I'm working on because I typically tend to use markers when colouring and that usually bleeds through onto the other page so it'll protect it if we do that. So before we get started, I'd just like to mention that I usually either listen to music or watch YouTube videos whilst I draw. Okay, so I also love to add characters into my doodles. So you can see here I took Spongebob and then add him, added him into my drawing. You can do this with any of your favourite characters or games that you like to play. Right, so now the sketch is done, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about which pens I like to use to ink my doodles. Here I have some Staedtler fine liners and a Molotow 0.4 ink liner. I'll show you a close up of the pack and I think I got this from Paper Chase but I think you can also get it from Amazon. 
Today I'm going to be using the 0.5 Stay Dry Fine Liner. Now when drawing the lines you want to make sure to add a thicker line around your doodles which you'll be able to see me doing here. It just makes it look a lot more defined as they say. Once we've finished the line work we then move on to the colour. I would suggest looking up colour combos on the internet and seeing which colours work well together. If you have a good understanding of colour theory you should be alright but I'm not that great at it so I always make sure to check. <laughs> the last thing I have to say is make sure to add shading and highlights to your colouring as that will make for a much more interesting looking piece. And with that, I'm just going to leave you to watch the rest of it speed up and I'll talk to you at the end. Alright, so this is the finished piece. I hope this helped in some way. If it did, please give it a thumbs up and comment below what you think and subscribe for more and as always thank you so so much for watching and i'll see you next time with another video okay bye